about ten minutes, so we can okay. get set up and okay. we get, it's about ten minutes. I'm gonna play um, my girlfriend. She's gonna talk her talk her segment. And I started streaming the show. Oh uh, yeah, you see the West Side Story. Don't you think that's gonna come in? And did you log off the other person? Is that what you're saying? They still had it recorded. website so you're not taping in here you're just going straight from your phone oh yeah he's also doing youtube okay oh okay so that's a youtube camera and that's a youtube so this camera right here that would be her so this camera right here that i got you nice stuff they ain't done this we put a recording studio in right there too oh man yeah Check, check. Check, check. You already know your favorite. You her favorite, I should say. Test, 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 test. test. Flexible, whatever you want to hit is probably important to. Obviously, you deal with school to prison pipeline. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so obviously that. But in addition to that, it's up to you. You can talk about that Asian thing if you want. That's a big thing. Okay. Yeah, so-called Asian hate. He said that. We hate y'all, and y'all rob us economically blind every single year. Y'all shoot our kids in the back if they steal a Chico stick after you done made billions. You know, so. I said weird oils and beer bombs and stuff like that, right? To that one side. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and I was just like, I didn't see them protesting with us, like, you know, all heavy, like, oh, you know. Like, they wasn't with us. They don't care about us. That's what I'm saying. And the most like, disrespectful thing, you know, Biden, he signed an executive order for Asian hate. And I said, we're executive order for police genocide or all these lynchings of black folk. Thank you. 
Test, 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 one, two. Am I too far away from it here? I'm good? All right. Test, test, test. I'm showing off your zebra cake, right? <laughs> Test, test, title. test. You know how people have a title? Right. Do you know how to do that? I think with Instagram, don't you add the title after it? Or you can do it before? It's after, right? Yeah, some people, I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they do it. I'm the most IT illiterate person you know. I got to show them the ginger ale, too. <laughs> Cashews, I love me some cashews. <laughs> so while we waiting for the show to start, just a couple of announcements to the brothers and sisters out there check, watching. Check. We live tonight, Philly Hot Radio. What's the website? www.phillyhotradio.com. So you want to go to www.phillyhot, that's with two T's, spell hot with two T's, www phillyhotradio.com and they'll be able to see uh, everything yeah, right also go to YouTube we stream it live right now as well go to YouTube also at Philly Hot Radio mm -hmm. and hot is with two T so you can hit up the YouTube Philly Hot Radio or you can go to the World Wide Web phillyhotradio.com spell hot with the two T's so I'm here with the lovely Miss Davina Cherry she didn't spoil me she didn't brought me the zebra cakes <laughs> She done brought me the sweeps ginger ale. Y'all know how I am about my zebra cakes. Y'all yes. know how I am about my ginger ale. And it cannot be Canada Dry. It must be Sweeps or Seagram's. Okay. And you know how I am about my cashews. So we doing it real live right here today. Couple quick announcements. The Boston, Massachusetts Black Parent Boot Camp. How much time we got? Um, we just started 7.05, so we still got an hour. I got oh, about oh, we live I got, already. I just put that on just because oh, well, I'm sitting here. Oh, let me cut then. I'm on your time. All right. I'm, I'm ready. Do you wanna, can you join my live, or do you, would you rather me uh, join yours? Join okay. mine. Okay. Join mine. Since I'm already. All right, y'all. Tune in. Go to Dr. Umar's page. <laughs> and you know it's Ifa Tunde, right? No, I'm sorry. No, it's not. Dr. No, it's not. It's Dr. Umar Johnson. Ifa Tunde is Facebook. And I'm on oh, both, okay. so you can do either one. But you Instagram, right? Yeah, I'm on Instagram. Okay. So when she do that, do I need to hit something? Okay. So she'll yeah. come up as a request, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. And it's going to be Davina, right? Yeah. What name I'm looking for, Davina? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You ain't bringing them samples of the beer oil, did you? <laughs> next time. Next time. Can you go ahead and um, play the first Let me see something. Let me know when you request it, because I don't want to click on the wrong one. Hey, what's up? This is your girl, Davina Cherie, and I'm here with Birdie. You already hey, know. Hey. You already know we got to get a dose of bird talk every uh, month when we do Here our we show, yeah. R&B Dreams. And what's the hot topic right now? Girl, we got to talk about it. What's up with the boy Derek Jackson? I just Derek think. Jackson out here being a, okay, I don't even a narcissistic, sociopath, uh, slash habitual pathological liar, Ooh. everything. Girl. Yeah, you know the psychology is your department, so I don't got the good word for okay. that player. But he quick. Okay. Like, he is truly quick. Girl, Talk about it. You ain't like it over I'm there. irritated by the, um, well, the so American public or whoever the, the instrument said, is. I'm sick of y'all because y'all gonna blame it on the wife. Because she came on there with a beanie hat and no bra. Bitch, if he was out here slinging his Johnson to out here in these streets, I ain't got to look like nothing. <laughs> he looked like he forced her on there anyway. Did you see the way he was gripping her hand up? Right. Like, yeah. So I'll be like, um, 
the internet see that coming from where. And the thing the about iPhone. that is, you could be Beyonce and get she. The thing is, it Thank don't matter you, what she, she look like. Oh, excuse me, she did. Yeah, she, she looks good when she feel like. And that bitch probably wake up beautiful, go to bed beautiful. She is beautiful with the body. Beautiful. I'm just saying. Yes, she so was beautiful with the body. Look like. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I did laugh at the jokes. I ain't going to go But once I get into my moral, you know what I'm saying? Don't blame that on the wife. Right. Don't play her. That gets on my nerves. Yeah. It's the wife's fault? Just leave the bitch. Mm-hmm. Leave her. Right. Hasta la vista. Mm-hmm. And I seen these pictures of her, like, on the internet. Like, when, it, I think it was, like, Valentine's Day. Because she was all... You know, dressed up and everything. She was lit. She got a little, you know, she got a body. I just was yes. like, yeah, don't put that up there. Because then you're going to have real niggas trying to get at her. Yeah, make her look like Frumpy Frumperton. And try to make her, you know what I'm saying? That you really got chicks co-signing something when your mistress, your wife look like this. That's why your mistress look like that. What? But then I was irritated because she was defending them in the video. And it's yes. like, she on drugs, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Just to find out that he was at the chick house that same week doing the video outside the mistress house. Like, I could not. So I was thinking every car video, or because I ain't never followed a dude. Mm-hmm. Real talk. I would see him, you know, what either people repost or just in the, what's that joint called, the explore page or whatever. I would see it and I'd be like, damn, he do be on point with some of this, <laughs> you know? But I just ain't never been that good person to be like, oh, let me hop on and see what Gary Jackson talking about today. I don't know. I just ain't never, I don't know. And certain people, they either come out at me or they don't. Mm-hmm. Something wasn't right with the boy. Mm-hmm. And then, the and, and so, you know Kevin on stage, the comedian boy? Yeah. He going to say, <laughs> why, why did Gary Jackson do, like, what's that, a reflection video? Like, when he talks about what happened in the video yeah, about yeah. himself in the third person. Because he know he ain't He's crazy. <laughs> Are you serious? That's like me and you having a talk and you go and critique this. Thomas and yes, Davina was a little upset. Uh, <laughs> that's you, bro. Right. You <laughs> so yeah, that is, yes, I can. Your dick oh. is dumb. His <laughs> wife is dumb for staying with him. Even though if that's what she wanna do, that is well within her right. Okay. That's her husband. She, I don't tell nobody do nothing to do with their husband because bitch you better not tell me what they do with you. Okay. But I'm just gonna pray for her because it's yeah. you gotta know your worth. Mm-hmm. Hopefully I, now I mean, this will be a wake up call with all the a, a press attention and social media attention, but you know. I don't know, girl. Sometimes people be so deep in their sickness, mm-hmm. they don't be knowing. Because your best friend can be like, no, I saw Derrick Jackson freaking three bitches back to back. I got video, audio, and FaceTime, bitch. You're going to be like, uh-uh, that was not Derrick. You know how some, pe- some people just be like that. She's just going to have to come into the light, Caroline, on her own. And he's using God. He's using God, like, to manipulate her. I didn't even want to use her. Yeah, like he was like real because she's into the Lord, so he all like all of a sudden he's into God and all that. Like, yeah, yeah, but that's what he blamed it on, quote unquote, saying because he fell off with God or whatever, he strayed. So now you back and know the Lord all over again. So he didn't. Why? Why everybody always want to bring Jesus in this? He minding his business. <laughs> Y'all come over here, tell my son Jesus had me. No, he wasn't. Right. I thought I, God was really saying. Yeah, go out and freak the moves. Go ahead. I'm going to forget you, bro. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Like, you always try to bring Jesus back in. You know, God, who, you know, whatever your preference to say, you know, the most high, you know, whatever you want to say. Somebody always bring that into it. You just be like, sir, where was he when you was doing what you was doing, bro? Mm-hmm. That's your wife. Right. But I digress. Well, we just going to have to move on. We want to move on on from Derrick Jackson and his bullshit. I'm about to say today is reality t- I mean, reality um divorce week. Really? Because I don't know if you watch Love and Mary's Huntsville. Oh, no. Well, that's a, that is convenient Girl. timing. Girl. That's Martell and Melody. They going through the same trash, but they fit in the, they divorce. But girl, he had a damn girlfriend for five years. Wow. Five years. So my well, I thought it, it would be better to sleep with one person as opposed to a bunch of other chicks. Mm. Wow. 
Wow. And the, and fish just ate a baby December 2020. All right, good night, bitch. <laughs> good night. Wow. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the deal breaker for me. The baby, yeah. Yeah, you ain't having no baby on me, nigga. It's I like, might have rolled a barrel on the um, you know, infidelity. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Don't let me have concrete hard facts though. If I got concrete Listen. hard proof, I'm out of here. See, and it's like. like I just like I have conversations like they like Davina, don't give up on 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 finding somebody. <laughs> How about they find me? And that's number one. And I'm just like, I'm not my best self. So some of these some of these these guys need to do the mirror work and see if they really are ready to be in a marriage. Cause I know the work to be in a relationship because I have been in long term relationships. I know I'm like really I really don't want that right now. <laughs> so right. I'm cool and it's like okay but see that make you a good person because you ain't out here gonna go fill some nigga head up like What you were just listening to is happening still on the YouTube live channel. So you want to go to phillyhotradio.com to listen to what they're saying as far as um, financial. You, it's, she's going to bring some information about, you know, finances and things that are Bi- Biden is doing, um, some of the relief packages and things that, you know, help us get our money up, you know, a little bit. But, um yeah, if you want to tune in to that, just go ahead and go to the YouTube channel, uh, Philly Hot Radio. And um, we're going to get started, Dr. Umar. All right. So what was just, we were just talking about before she started getting into the fina- financial stuff, she just wanted to vent okay. about Derek Jackson. Yes. What, what do you think is, you know, as far as that whole situation um, with Derek Jackson? Well, with regard to the Derek Jackson situation, I was unfamiliar with him. Mm-hmm. I had never me heard too. the name until a few days ago. Okay. People started sending me the video, mm-hmm. and they said that the radical black feminist on YouTube is starting a movement to shut down all of the male life coaches. Mm. So I was taken aback Who is by the radical? Radical black feminist. Okay. Which is basically sisters who see the black male oh so it's not it's not one any one person it's not any oh, okay one person. you're just saying there's a group got right. you got sisters you. who see the black male as the source of mm. all of the black woman's problems if there's a problem that the black woman has mm-hmm. it's the black man's fault so they don't see racism they don't see lack of opportunity they don't see the black woman mm-hmm. all they see is the black man it's mm-hmm. always his fault okay. and the message was they intended to start a campaign to destroy all prominent black male life coaches on YouTube. Mm-hmm. So people were sending it to me as a warning or mm-hmm. a heads up. So okay. I took offense to it because unlike the Derek Jacksons and the Kevin Samuels of the world, I actually have credentials. They don't. Mm-hmm. I'm actually a con- clinician. They're not. not. You understand? I actually mm-hmm. been in the mental health field for 20 years. They mm-hmm. haven't. And life coaching is probably the smallest piece of my overall puzzle of services that I offer to the community. Now, with that being said, looking at the Derrick Jackson situation, there were certain contradictions I saw on the part of the sisters who were quote unquote exposing him. And I hate that word. But one contradiction, if you're doing this so his wife will know, if you're doing this Mm -hmm. to protect the sister involved, why not go to her mm-hmm. confidentially, mm-hmm. let her know what's been going on, mm-hmm. and let her decide what she wants to do with it? Right. Because if you look at the video that she did, it doesn't appear that she was in shock at all mm-hmm. about what she heard. <laughs> mm-hmm. Nine times out of ten, she already knew what the man was doing mm-hmm. because there was no shock None on her whatsoever. part. None. Not with there that was bonnet no on. surprise whatsoever. <laughs> okay. So for these women to be arguing that they're exposing Derek Jackson to protect his wife, that is a total misrepresentation of the truth mm-hmm. because you're disrespecting her mm-hmm. 
-hmm. more than you're disrespecting him mm -hmm. because you're making her look bad, you're making her look like a fool, and you're just constantly putting out his information, mm -hmm. which is a reflection on her right. as the wife. So that was feminist hypocrisy number, mm -hmm. one. number one. Number two, when I look at a lot of these women who are doing these Derrick Jackson expose videos, mm -hmm. I don't see any responsibility being laid at the feet of the women involved. Mm. All of How them knew that? what they were doing. How about All that? of them knew what they were doing. Nobody has held them accountable yet. So the woman who voluntarily gets involved with the married man is a victim mm. all of a sudden. How about that? And the total blame is put on the black male. And he was wrong. Mm -hmm. He had no right to be cheating on his wife. Mm -hmm. And he had no right allegedly Mm. bringing a woman into their home, mm -hmm. allegedly mm -hmm. telling them that his wife's sex wasn't good, allegedly uh -huh. you spilling the tea, Dr. Umar. I didn't them, know about all that. And allegedly <laughs> not being forthcoming okay. about the fact he had children. If those allegations are true, that's wrong. Mm. I could respect a man who says to these women, I'm married, I love my family, my kids, what we do is what we do, but it right. better never come to my wife. At least you're being upfront. Right. But if he told them he was leaving his wife, then that was leading them on. Because mm. now they can say, you told me that you guys were breaking up. Mm. But regardless. Regardless. Y'all knew he was still married at the time. You understand? Mm. And you still entered into a relationship with a married man knowing he was married. Mm -hmm. So it should be equal blame. And when I hear people say things like, well, those women were not a part of his marriage. They didn't take the wedding vow. Mm -hmm. Derrick Jackson took the wedding vow. True. Well, to me, mm -hmm. that is just as hypocritical as not holding the women involved responsible because we are a community. Mm -hmm. And as a community, as a black woman, mm -hmm. you are just as accountable right. to his wife mm -hmm. as he is. Mm -hmm. Where is the sisterhood? Where is the community? Mm -hmm. Where is the all for one, one for all? Mm -hmm. To say these women are not responsible for what they did because they didn't take a marriage vow mm -hmm. is the most European thing I heard all week. If you are a black woman and you care about other black women, then what you did to his wife is just as bad as what he did, if not worse. Mm -hmm. Let me say this and I'll be quiet. I don't like the way that this looks to the young people. Mm -hmm. See, I'm always coming from a school psychologist perspective. I'm always looking at how does this appear mm -hmm. to our young people? Mm -hmm. And when black boys, teenagers, see black women gang up on a black man and spend every day, all day long trying to destroy him, mm -hmm. there was nothing wrong with addressing it. But we got other issues. Mm -hmm. We got miseducation issues. We got homelessness issues. Mm -hmm. We got police genocide issues. We got gentrification issues. We got mass incarceration issues, access to wealth issues. We have so many problems. We are a people in a state of emergency. You this don't have true. time to do 50 million <laughs> Derrick Jackson videos. And if you got time to do 50 million Derrick Jackson videos, something is wrong oh. with you. You see, and it means that you're doing it for fame, you're doing it for attention, you're doing it for likes, you're doing it for views, right. you're doing it for YouTube dollars. Right. Because if you were doing it for the benefit of the community, you would have done it a another way. Mm -hmm. You would have got away from it after you finished and found something else to focus upon. But our boys are watching this. Yeah. And it's feeding this energy that some toxic males are putting out in the community that black women ain't worth the black man's time. Mm -hmm. See, I don't want our 15, that? see when a 15, 16 and 17 year old black boy mm -hmm. who's politically uneducated turns on YouTube and see a whole army of black women attacking this one black man day after day mm -hmm. after day and then absolving the women involved of any blame whatsoever, mm -hmm. it starts mm -hmm. reinforcing that narrative that you should go get your white girl, go get your Latino, 
Go get you a Chinese. Go get you an Indian. Go get you a Jew. You understand? Mm-hmm. Go get you a Mexican because they know how to treat a man. So by doing this, they're perpetuating a narrative right. that is going to have our black boys thinking that they should not be committed to black women. Right. I don't like that. Okay. And on the flip side, mm-hmm. it's going to feed the negative narrative of a lot of radical black feminists mm-hmm. who are teaching our girls that the black men ain't worth their time. So mm-hmm. on both sides of the aisle, the way the women are handling this mm-hmm. and the way that the man is being perceived is going to feed into negative stereotypes that our children are seeing all day long anyway. Mm-hmm. For example, most of the major advertising right now Right is either interracial couples or mixed race couples. You understand? Mm -hmm. Biracial and interracial. You don't see a lot of black man, black woman advertising. You don't see a lot of black woman, black man sitcoms and miniseries and movies anymore. Everything is interracial or biracial. And by by reinforcing this, this whole Derrick Jackson saga, it ain't even about Derrick Jackson. Mm -hmm. It's about the way black women feel and relate to black men. Mm-hmm. And it's about the way black men feel and relate to black women. Mm-hmm. It is a reality show mm-hmm. that is just as dangerous as the reality shows that we see played out on television. We're creating a consciousness around black romance and black love mm-hmm. that's going to send a lot of our teenagers and a lot of our sons and daughters looking for a mate from another race. So you miss you miss the... Uh I want to say Bill Cosby. I can't even say the Bill Cosby, (laughs) the show, because it's like, dang, even he, it's a stigma with Bill Cosby. But so you want those, you want those days back, the, 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 the black family sitcoms and those kind of things. Not sitcom though. Drama. Drama. See, black life in America is not comedy. Mm -hmm. It's drama. Every day you wake up in Philadelphia, somebody's getting shot. That's drama. Philadelphia leads America in gentrification. That's drama. So the black reality should not be made a joke. We don't need any more sitcoms because sitcoms eat away at the reality of our experience. We don't need to be making jokes Mm -hmm. about the black family. We don't need to be making jokes about the black husband, the black wife, the black children, because you're taken away from the reality of our situation. We need dramas. I wasn't against the Cosby show, Mm -hmm. but the Cosby show, to some extent, was a misrepresentation Mm -hmm. of everyday black reality. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I see no problem with projecting a successful black male Mm -hmm. as a doctor and a successful black female as an attorney in the same house with children Mm -hmm. because that does happen. Mm -hmm. So I have no problem with projecting that, but I don't think the Cosby show had enough real moments in it. I don't think the Cosby show had enough of the true encounters that black people go through on a regular basis to give it a real feeling. So even if they live in the suburbs, you could have showed a lot more about racism. Mm -hmm. You could have showed a lot more about poverty. I felt the Cosby show was a distraction away from what the everyday black family really goes through, but could have been a blessing had they injected more of the everyday real life experiences for black people. But the reason they don't do that, the reason with these sitcoms, they don't put enough real life racism in them, Mm. is they're trying to attract the non-black viewer. They want white people to watch the Cosby Mm -hmm. show. They want white people to watch watch Mm Blackish. They want white people to watch these shows. And if you put too much racism in it, Mm -hmm. too much real life blackness in it, white people won't watch watch it. That's why (laughs) none of the shows catered to black people really address the needs of black people because you want to make sure white people don't turn it off. If there's one thing white people do not like, they do not like to see a mirror held up to themselves Mm -hmm. with regard to how they treat black people. The first of all white privileges, the first of all white privilege is the privilege to never be held accountable for how you treat black people. That's the first of all white privileges. So before I'm gonna touch back real quick, with the Derrick Jackson situation, I agree to a certain extent. However, I just think the whole, the whole even being on social media thing is just like, Every day he's on there preaching about, you know, what guys need to do to do better. But it's like 
he's preaching is is it because he was actually doing those things mm-hmm. himself? Mm-hmm. You know, it takes one to know one, you know. Oh, he and was then, a hypocrite. You know, he it's like we don't have wrong. no. Okay, so we agree that he he's absolutely wrong. a hypocrite. That ain't the issue. So he was dead wrong. Okay, that and is then not my problem. also for me, it was like my problem was people focusing on the is. wife, like the in in the light of why she wearing a bonnet. It's like y'all That's totally a strong woman. You know, That's it's a very like strong woman. It's like and they're attacking her. For how she looks, it doesn't matter if she was Beyonce. Beyonce got cheated on. First of all, you know her body. That was my thing. Let me tell you again. I'm always looking at things from the eyes of psychology. What I got from her in that outfit with the bonnet, what went over everybody's head, mm-hmm. she dressed like that on purpose. Mm-hmm. There was a nonverbal message that she was communicating to anybody watching the video, and the nonverbal message was simply. I'm not buying this shit. Okay. <laughs> See, if she would have got dressed up, then that would have communicated, I'm behind him. Mm-hmm. I'm backing this story. I believe everything he say. But the mm-hmm. fact she came down to the living room in her pajamas was letting us know, mm-hmm. don't fall for this mm-hmm. because I'm not falling mm-hmm. for this. Okay. So I had no problem with the way she dressed. Right. That was a message to us that I am not invested in the message he about okay. to give y'all. We totally missed the point okay. of the bonnet. The bonnet means I'm not connected. Okay. That was the bonnet's message. Got you. Feel you. I feel you on that for sure. How well? How are we on time? So we still running on the other audio. Okay. Yeah. Just let me know. Um, and then Here, we oh. here's another conversation, and he's wrong. He's dead wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm not worrying about him lying to the world because 99% of the people on YouTube lie to the world. Mm-hmm. 99% of celebrities lie to the world. Mm-hmm. I'm not concerned about his lies on YouTube. Right. We want to be entertained. And the Negroes on the YouTubian universe, the YouTubian the universe, universe don't care about truth. They care about likes and views. They care mm-hmm. about being entertained. You understand me? Mm -hmm. So they don't care if he told the truth or not. The issue is whether or not it's entertaining. So the YouTubian community does not function on truth. The YouTubian community functions on entertainment. Numbers. You understand? So I could care less about whether he lied to the YouTube world. That ain't the point. He lied to his wife. Period. And now she has to suffer the repercussions of the dysfunctional YouTubian community. See, social network is the devil. It is absolutely the devil. And social network (laughs) is one of the best examples we have to show you how dysfunctional and self-hating black America is. Listen, social network gives everybody Mm -hmm. their own media platform. 50 years ago, you had to go through a filter. Right. 50 years ago, you couldn't say it unless you could verify it. Right. 50 years ago, you had to go through the five major media companies to put anything out there. Absolutely. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, it changed the game. Now, everybody has a media platform. And look what we do with it. Go through YouTube. How many channels do you see are really dedicated to a good conversation about something relevant? How many channels do you see are focused on any of the core problems of black America? The miseducation, the mass incarceration, the gentrification, the access to wealth, the police genocide. There's channels out there. It's a few. There's a few. But you get lucky when you find one. compared to everything else, you would not think that black America Mm -hmm. was in a state of emergency if you look at YouTube. You got people, the whole channel is dedicated to gossip. The whole channel dedicated to slander. The whole channel dedicated to reality TV. The whole channel dedicated to sports. We are in a state of emergency fighting for the survival of our community. And we want to spend all day long talking about one man's infidelity when half of all Americans cheat on their spouse. That does not make it acceptable. But it simply says we got bigger fish to fry than that. But it begs forth another question that has to be handled. I'm going to introduce this even though it's controversial because it got to be discussed. Mm -hmm. Speaking as a psychologist, being brutally honest with you, Mm -hmm. I think one of our greatest dysfunctions when it comes to the black family right now, Mm -hmm. in this generation, the millennials and the young ones and the ones over that, is you have this belief, not you, we, Mm -hmm. that alpha males are monogamous. 
alpha males are not monogamous. That word, alpha male. Stay with we me. Gotta, the, we gotta the, talk the, listen, this. and I'm not giving Derek Jackson no excuse because he cheated. So he alpha male? I would consider him an alpha. He okay. is the type of male that a lot of women would want to date. And guess what? This whole situation he went through, it will mean nothing. There'll be more women waiting for him when it's over. I mm. did a video a couple days ago when I said to Jared Derrick Jackson's wife, if you want to leave your husband for your own reasons, that's your business. You don't leave your husband for what other women want to say about him. Mm -hmm. Because them same women, them oh, yeah. same women waiting telling you to leave Derrick Jackson right. will be in his bed tomorrow. You Period. understand? Here's the point that I'm trying to make. There's millions of black men out there who will be loyal to our sisters, mm -hmm. you understand, mm -hmm. and faithful. But they're the beta males. Alpha males by nature are not monogamous. Mm -hmm. The man that every black woman wants, they are not monogamous, you understand. And that is a conversation that has never been honestly had. It doesn't mean you can't find a good man. Mm -hmm. It means you need to revisit your interest in having an alpha. Those men historically, mm -hmm. Of any race, we're talking about us, obviously, mm -hmm. but look at the alpha male in any community, white, Chinese, Arab, Latino, Mexican, alpha males do not do monogamy. Okay. And I think alpha males need to stop lying. Let me give you an example. I'm going to have two queens. Mm -hmm. I've made that clear. It's no need for a woman to even try to get with me if she don't understand she's going to have a sister wife. I'm not going to lie to my wives. Do you understand? I'm going to be honest. You're going to know coming in that I'm going to have to. Ain't no lies. I'm not playing no lies with my queendom. Derek Jackson should have done the same thing. Derek Jackson is not monogamous. I'm not sure if he ever can be. You understand? And he should have been honest with his wife going into it. Mm -hmm. Here's a big problem. Black men are not giving black women an opportunity to choose. If you and I are dating, I need to tell you, listen. You're not going to be the only one. Mm. And I need to be honest with you about how many others there will be. Right. So for Dr. Umar, I'm going to have two. That's it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Another man might want three. Another man might want, might want four. And he might not want those other women consistently during the marriage. Some men are serial polygamous. You know what that means? That means that co-wife is never the same person from year to year. Mm. In other words... The first year of our marriage, she's the co-wife. The second year of our marriage, she's the co-wife. You mm. have men who have a high need for variety. Mm. They know this about themselves. But because they want you to be the primary woman, they don't tell you the truth. I think that's what happened with Brother Derrick Jackson. His wife is a very traditional, mm -hmm. laid back. She's not a, a, a hot girl. You understand? She's a beta you would say she's I wouldn't a beta say woman. she's a beta. I would say she's she's a traditional black woman, raised okay. well, homegrown, into the church, love her man, love her family, love her children. She's a and she's beautiful. Mm -hmm. She was the perfect catch for Derrick Jackson, but because she was so perfect as a woman to hold him down and help him lay his foundation, he misled her Manipulated about her. Yep. He misled her about his true intentions. You see, when you look at her, I can see why he chose her because she's everything you need minus the drama but mm -hmm. he lied to her mm -hmm. you understand and my biggest issue with him you should not have misled your wife about being a monogamous when you know you not and we got too many men misleading women making them think that they're monogamous and they are not, not. that's where the problem comes in wow so many things i have so many things i want to say but it's like ah, i'm trying to catch all my thoughts um, well, I don't want to spend too much time on this. How are we doing on time? We Now we on this, the live feed? All right, so we are here today, not to get away from the point of the matter. Mm -hmm. Black Parent Advocate, the newest book Dr. Yes, Umar is putting out. And now people on the IG Live just got a back behind the scenes uh, conversation. So lucky y'all. <laughs> We gonna get into this book. So I read, um, I started reading the book. I just got it like a week ago. I was yes, with you Thank when you I got it. So. And so I loved, I will say I loved seeing the softness of how you feel about your mother. I, that was a side to me that I have never witnessed before. What was that, what was that? When you were writing an open letter to your mom. Okay, okay. And I said, who is Jermaine? 
That's my birth name. <laughs> I said it was Jermaine. My mother, I was so, born Jermaine Shoemake. Because okay. my mother's surname is Shoemake. Okay. So I was Jermaine Shoemake. Oh, not Johnson. So no, where did that Johnson come comes from? later. My father was Johnson. Oh, my family's a Johnson, too. We could be related. Okay. <laughs> so oh, when my parents married, I was about seven or eight years old. Mm-hmm. As part of that arrangement, my father legally changed my name from Jermaine Shoemake to Umar Johnson. And then we relocated to North Carolina. Okay. Which was easy on me dealing with a new name because everyone in North Carolina would meet me as Umar Johnson. Okay. But back in Philadelphia, was Jermaine. I was still Jermaine <laughs> okay. for a while and still am to some people, you understand. Yeah. But my biggest issue with the name change is my father did something to my original birth certificate. And so, you know, in spiritual circles, it's often good to know the time of your birth. Mm-hmm. But because he destroyed my original birth certificate, I no longer know the original time time. of my birth. So that has been a problem. So um, just reading and opening the book, you just go right into the the sample letters, and I love that. And there was some a few things just skimming through. I didn't know, like, you could get a second. uh, It looks like you could get a second. um, Opinion. A sick, uh, the books, it was saying about textbooks, like you can get a second copy. A second set of books. If the child is in special ed, if they have an IEP, the parent can make the argument that my child needs a mm-hmm. second set of books to come home with them because they can't possibly practice and get the homework done without the text in front of them. But even for regular ed students, the parents can organize. See, what a special ed parent can do by herself, regular ed parents can do as a group. In other words, if your son is in special ed, you don't need me and her. You're gonna call an IEP meeting and say, as a condition of my disabled child's education, he needs a second set of books. But if all three of us got children in regular ed, we can form a committee, meet with the principal, and demand that our children come home with the books. Mm-hmm. See, this is not sending kids home with the books. That's only a ghetto thing, you know. Mm-hmm. You can't find me a white school in the suburbs. You can't find me a school where the children don't take their books home. That is a mm-hmm. ghetto policy. Mm-hmm. It is disrespectful, and it clearly sends a message that neither the child nor the parent values the education. Mm-hmm. Because how are you expecting me to practice and improve, and I don't even have use of the book? And we have allowed it to go on. It's been about 20 years now of children Mm -hmm. coming home without the books, and we can't blame nobody but ourselves because we are so complacent. One thing that slavery did to the Negro psyche, slavery made us comfortable being treated like dogs. Slavery made us comfortable being treated like dogs, and we have to get out of that comatose that has us believing white people have some sort of decree from God Almighty to treat black people any kind of way they want to. And um, another thing I saw, um, it, you were writing a letter about, it looked like disciplining um, children, like I guess if you, um, if your child is being reprimanded um, for, um, I guess hitting another student or something, right. that was uh, another, did you want to touch base on that? Because well, as a substitute teacher myself, um, I feel like there is pressure from, you know, administration and things like that, especially when it comes to... Pressure to, to do what? To, like, uh, the first thing they want to do is we suspending you, or that's the threat. Right. That's, you know, as right. a, I'm a substitute teacher. Right. You know, so it's like, that's the first go-to is always mm-hmm. that. And it's not effective. Uh, right. Out-of-school suspension grew out of early American agriculture, where... Every other white family had a farm or worked on one. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, if you were suspended from school for five days, guess what you were doing for five days? Out there, reaping the crops, planting the crops, plowing the field. Nobody wanted to get suspended from school. Because you had to do back-breaking work with your father in the field. But school has evolved since then. America is no longer predominantly an agrarian society, so out-of-school suspension don't work. So why do they still use it? Because it gives teachers a break from black children they don't want to be bothered with anyway. It is an absolute crime that most black children in America are being taught by people who could care less as to whether they succeeded or not in life. And I don't care if they go to Lower Marion High School 
which is one of the richest school districts in America. I don't care if they're in the school district of Philadelphia. I don't care if they're at, a, at an independent white school or a Catholic school. The bottom line is 99% of all black kids in America, whether they're rich or poor, mm -hmm. is being taught by a white person or a non-African, Chinese, Mexican, Latino, you name it, who has no vested interest in their success. That is a crime. A, educating children is so important that the person educating them must be a stakeholder in that success. Right. They must be a stakeholder in that success. And black children are taught by people who are not only not stakeholders, but could care less about whether they learned or not, and are often the leading proponent to get them expelled, medicated, or juvenile adjudicated. Right. The school is the leading referral source for new juvenile justice arrests and uh, complaints. In other words, a, a black boy is more likely to get arrested in school than in the street. It's the teacher who is sending the black boy through the criminal justice system already before he even graduates from high school. I'm just reading some of the comments, talking about teachers. It was a section here that also said about um, checking to see if a teacher is certified or not. And even as a substitute, I've been trying to get certified. Um, it seems like they get they give you a, stipu a stipulation where you have to have a certain grade uh, GPA in most of these certification programs. If Do you have any um, they do certification that programs you, you recommend? They're all largely the same, but I would recommend go through an HBCU. You feel me? Okay. Cheney, Lincoln, see if they got certification program. Dell State, Maryland, Eastern Shore, Howard, I recommend those. Okay. Because what the white folks are doing to keep us out, and they do this across profession, but especially in education. And the reason why they're so aggressive with it in education is because public education is the white woman's go-to career. Mm -hmm. you, you follow me? Mm -hmm. If you're a white woman and you're just looking for something that you can eat off forever, good retirement, good benefits, more vacation days than any other professional, mm -hmm. right? I'm not going to lie. That's why I became a teacher, because I want my summers to myself. I ain't going to no, hold you. No, you're supposed you. to become a teacher to help the kids. Woman. <laughs> that's summers too, that's too. But, but I, they, need my, I need my But that's my why they become health. teachers, yes. you see. And so no matter what other career their husband has, he's on their insurance. You see what I'm saying? So public education is a white woman's empire. And they guard it by keeping black women and others out. Mm -hmm. It's no coincidence that we now have a national shortage of black female teachers. What are we doing with a national shortage of black female teachers? I'll tell you what we're doing with it. Number one, last hired, first fired. Number two, given the toughest jobs and always overlooked for promotion, mm -hmm. right? A black woman could have been in the classroom for 20 years. Certified principal, never gets picked to run a school. White girl been there two years can barely teach. She already got her own school. You see? So a lot of black women, they love our kids, but they get burned out. They keep you Hello. in the classroom forever and never promote you. You go downtown to 440, all them young white folks in there, they don't know nothing about our kids. They got them jobs because of their connections with white folk. And the third thing is these teacher examinations that they're using. This praxis, it ain't nothing but racism and apartheid and they use them test scores to systemically keep us mm -hmm. out just like you said they look at your gpa and that's this wasn't my career path so right. i studied communications mm -hmm. nbc you know I, w I was an intern at a few tv stations and did some radio uh internships and record label internships so mm -hmm. this i started a nonprofit. so then that became my passion and it's like teaching is just another branch of um, what I'm doing in my nonprofit. So it was like, it wasn't my career path. So my GPA, when I was done school, I said, I'm done. You know, and I wasn't thinking about my mm -hmm. GPA mm -hmm. for a certification mm -hmm. program. So that was, a, I don't know who, a lot of people may be in that situation too. Yeah. So definitely going through a HBCU is the, what you would recommend. Yeah. And, and keep in mind, they didn't decide on the policy before they looked at black people's QPAs. Mm -hmm. They decided on the policy after they look at black people's QPAs. Mm -hmm. In other words, what can we do to cut down on the number of black women trying to become teachers? Black men. When I was at Millersville University 20 years ago, I was a psychology major. I was president of the Black Student Union. I influenced a lot of other students to get into psychology to help us fix our people's minds. 
So guess what they did? To cut down on the amount of black students who would cross over from their major to psychology, mm -hmm. they upped the GPA. Mm -hmm. You see, it was mm -hmm. I think it was like 3.0. They made it like a 3.5. Right. What can we do to keep the Negroes out? And so the test score is now the new Jim Crow sign. Just like mm -hmm. you used to have a sign that say no blacks, mm -hmm. they don't use the words. They use numbers now. So now they say 3.75 only, 1,600 mm -hmm. on the eight on the uh, SAT. You mm -hmm. got to have at least a 19 on your ACT. They use the numbers. They look at how black people score, mm -hmm. and then they set the bar just above where you score to make sure some of you creep in, but most right. of you are kept out. And we need to start fighting against the test. Mm -hmm. And the reason we're not fighting against the test is because a lot of our black politicians are too afraid to charge and accuse white people of racism. Another genius chess move on the part of white folks, they have made black people feel uncomfortable accusing them of racism. Whenever you accuse white people of racism, you're playing the race card. Mm -hmm. you, you understand? Mm -hmm. As if every card ain't the race card. What was slavery? Wasn't that the right. race card? Jim Crow, police genocide, miseducation, mass incarceration. Show me one aspect of American society that's not ruled by race. It has to be ruled by race mm -hmm. because white people are a numerical minority globally and they're quickly becoming one in their own country. So if you do not focus on race, if you do not focus on white privilege as a white person, then you're undermining your advantages. So they're always looking at how many black people are involved. Mm -hmm. They're always looking at how many of us get an opportunity. There has never been in America, not one day in 400 years, where they haven't sat around a table and, and decided how better, how much of a better job can we do keeping black people from getting opportunities. Absolutely. I know someone who took the praxis about six times. And can't know. pass it, but the white girl take it one time, she'll mm -hmm. pass it. And how about the black girl who failed the praxis might have tutored five or six white girls, and four to six white girls she tutored passed it, but the tutor <laughs> never passed the test. You know why? We're not in the rooms when they score the test. How do you know you failed it? How do you know you failed it? Because a white person sent you a letter in the mail and said you failed it. If you think white folks are going to be honest, if you think white folks are going to be honest about black people's test scores, when jobs are at stake, resources are at stake, political control is at stake, you're out of your mind. Right. If they can lie and tell you you're not even a human being, what the hell you think they'll do with some votes in a closed room or some test scores in a closed room? It's the same thing with elections. Black people actually think these white folks mm -hmm. count the votes. You really think they counting these votes? Oh, that was a close run. Wasn't no damn close run. You won, but you ain't got nobody in that room with the guts to come out and say you won. I'll give y'all an example. The Breonna Teller case. The Attorney oh. General for Kentucky, a coon, a coon with a white girl, he had a grand jury. He basically shafted the whole grand jury process. Didn't give them all the evidence didn't tell them that there was six potential murder charges that they could have brought forth for them cops who shot our sister Breonna Teller. Guess what? We never knew until one of the jurors went public and one of the jurors mm -hmm. petitioned the courts to release the transcripts of the grand jury. In other words, somebody was in the mm -hmm. private room mm -hmm. and decided to tell. Are you following me? Right. We need somebody who's back there counting the votes to decide to tell. Mm -hmm. We need somebody back there when they scoring these teacher practice exams who decided to tell. We need spooks by the door. Mm -hmm. The problem is we ain't got too many spooks by the door because most of our people act like they infiltrate in the system on our behalf when they end up getting flipped by the system mm -hmm. used against us. Absolutely. Very few Negroes who go into the system come out loyal to black folks. Um, this is, I'm glad you brought that point up because I'm thinking about um, today, I don't know if you heard the defense set about George Floyd. what they say? Um, basically saying that he was on all types of meth and um, um, he had another type of pill, perks and all and this in his system. what that got to do? In his system that he swallowed it to try to hide it because the cops, when the cops came. So, so that was the, the overdose was his. So my thing is, 
how do we know for sure, like you're saying, what they're saying, if that's true? You don't. You don't, you, you know? Don't. So that's my, I'm glad you just brought that point up because that's where I was about to lead into. Mm -hmm. So this is 2021, 2020, we already know, was a very challenging year, but I'm kind of glad those things that happened, not glad, but I feel like as a society, I guess you could say a third eye is opening in a sense, and um, we're kind of, Things that we already know exist. Mm -hmm. Some people that don't, they're they're finally realizing these things exist. Um, as far as racism, mm -hmm. and um, we got now Asians are being attacked. Well, they're saying they've always been attacked. Um, what is your take now okay. on this movement? <laughs> Let's talk about the Asian invasion of the Black agenda. Every president in American history since. Dr. King's assassination, April the 4th, 1968. So next week, 78, 88, 98, 08, 18, 19, 20, 21. 53 years. Every president since Lyndon Baines Johnson has had to select a non-black minority issue that they would cater to and that they would project to distract away from the black agenda being the primary non-white issue in America. Dr. King was a media genius because Dr. King was able to keep the black agenda on the forefront of the TV. Every night you turned on the TV, the black agenda was there. That's why they let the water hose get blown. That's why they let the dogs bite us up. That's why they didn't use violence because Dr. King knew he had to master the message from the media. So after Dr. King used the media against white supremacy, he may have been the only black leader who was ever strategic enough to use the media against his own system. They said, we can't let this happen again. So every president since LBJ has had to choose a minority issue that they would cater to and publicize to make sure black people's issues are never discussed. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama. LBGTQ. Every day you woke up, Obama was talking about LBGTQ. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Every day you woke up, he was talking about immigrants in the wall in Mexico. Joe Biden. Every day you wake up, he's talking about some new transgender rights and transgender discrimination. But now with the Asian invasion, Joe Biden has a second minority issue. So he, not only does he have the transgender thing that he's catering to, mm -hmm. now he got the Asians. Now, they're talking about violence against Asians. First of all, wrong is wrong. No matter who does it, no matter who the victim is. When those eight Asians was murdered in Atlanta, it was wrong. My heart go out to their family. Mm -hmm. That shouldn't have happened. But don't you dare use that and turn it into a political stunt to make it look like Asians are victimized in America by violence more than black folks. We've been getting victimized for four centuries, and we've never gotten the type of attention that the Asian community got. A few days ago, President Biden signed an executive order against violence against Asians. He signed, he used his presidential privilege to sign an executive order against Asian Americans. Can I ask you a question? Where has been the executive order against violence against black people? Where has been the executive order against police genocide? Where has been the executive order against all these lynchings and all these hate crimes against black folk? We've been here four centuries. We built the damn country. No executive order. One tragedy in the Asian community, they get an executive order. July of 2015, Charleston, South Carolina, Dylan Roof walked into a church and murdered nine Africans, including seven mothers. They didn't fly the flag half mass. The president and vice president didn't come and meet with us face to face, and there was no executive order. So black people are seeing right now how the white power structure is catering to another racist agenda above and beyond our own. It is an insult for them to cater to the Asian community like that and then try to argue that we participate in the systemic violence against Asians. If that's the case, if black people don't like Asians, 
How the hell they robbing us blind every day in America's ghettos? If black people don't like Asians, how in the hell they selling record numbers of Chinese food every single day? If black people don't like Asians, how in the hell are they in control of a $30 billion hair care industry? If black people don't like Asians, why there's so many Asians in the black community? Uh-uh, this is Joe Biden and his White House in the American power structure deflecting again. Why now? Because they want to take attention away from the George Floyd case. We're going to put the attention mm, on violence against Asians so nobody pays attention to the George Floyd case. This is about making sure nobody's paying attention if they let Officer Derek Chauvin off or if they give him a slap on the wrist conviction and sentencing. That's what this is about. We're going to distract from the fact we didn't do nothing about police brutality against black people yet. And we're going to put all the attention on the Asians so black people get no attention at all. And we buying into it. Negroes out there marching with the Asians. They're like, we march for the LBGTs. They're like, we march for the illegal immigrants. What you marching for them for? Mm -hmm. Ain't none of them never fought for you. The Asian Americans ain't never stood up for black people. Never. And we run around standing up for them. The immigrants, they never stood up for black people, but we run around standing up for them. Negroes had better learn and learn soon that the only friend we got is each other. And we need to stop giving our energy to other people's fights when they don't fight for us. Period. I'm with you on that one. Um, we going to uh, touch base. How much time we got? Three minutes. We got three minutes left. You want to roll? Okay. She got a cut or can she roll over? Well, um, we I'm pretty, good. I mean, we, we can we, do another half. Okay. Um, just lost my train of thought. Um, I wanted to go over, um, lastly, to just kind of wrap. Okay. We, what happened we, with Little Nas X? Uh, before, I'm still waiting because everybody posted look, it. Look, I didn't it's see on it yet. What, what was I keep, it? I keep hearing about it, but our producer here today, Sharif, T said <laughs> Tell me what, what he said had happened was um, some demonic things going on as far as a commercial that came out yeah, and it has 666 six, six yeah. on the sneakers. So everybody likes to wear Air Max. Okay. Everybody know I came that 96 Air Max. Okay. And with the 96 Air Max, the red and black, mm -hmm. they had blood drippers on them, mm -hmm. and they had 666 on them as well. Okay. And then on a commercial, it was little Nas X, dressed in pretty much like all leather, hair is black, corn rolls, and then there's a devil mm -hmm. sitting in a chair. He's on top of the devil like a stripper giving a lap dance. No way. Wow. This is a commercial or a video? This is a video right now. <laughs> Nike's claiming that they didn't authorize it, but... This is a video for one of Little Nas X's songs. Yes. What's the name okay. of the song? I'll show what the song name is. I'll look. It's a brand new video. Brand new. Okay. Brand new. Here's what I would say to that. <laughs> okay. At the apex of the global white supremacist hierarchy... There are, in fact, demonic rituals. At the very top of the white elite, they do pay homage to Satan and the spirit of evil. They get their energy from Satan and the spirit of evil. That's one of the reasons why you have such a large child sex trafficking ring. Because amongst this uh, fraternity of vampires... They believe that sex with children provides them with a protection and with a strength that allows them to continue to do what they do. They also assassinate a large number of these children and they drink some of the fluid that comes out of the brain because in their demonic philosophy, there's certain uh, fluid from the brain of a child that provides them with the vitality. Yes, oh, that's why you're that seeing... Good. That, that's why you saw the European who they said committed suicide, who had the island, the sex trafficking island. He was friends with uh, yeah. uh, Bush and Clinton, and I forget his name. He didn't commit suicide. You know, they killed him because he could expose the whole situation. Jeffrey Epstein. Epstein. Yeah. Jerry Epstein. Jeffrey Epstein. Yeah. This is what they do. You saw last week they found a whole bunch of children in Philadelphia. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. a, a sex trafficking ring. But notice they didn't arrest nobody. They keep finding children, but they never find the perpetrators. How was that? Y'all got access to everybody's cell phone, everybody's email. Right. Y'all got GPS. 
You could spot a fly on a wall in Afghanistan, but you can't find mm -hmm. who let them kids out their car. You know why? Because it's being done at the very highest levels of American society. The judges are involved. The politicians are involved. The preachers are involved. And the child custody and child welfare organizations are involved. That's one of the biggest reasons they love taking black kids out of the home because they put them in these group homes and from the group homes they get initiated, stolen, drafted and used for the sex activities of the upper white global po white power structure. This is bigger than we could ever imagine. It is demonic, it is satanist, it is sexual abuse and when you get into entertainment, whether you're an athlete, a singer or whatever, it is almost impossible for you to break the $500 million glass ceiling if you don't participate in some ritual or another. They don't let you into that fraternity unless they have something that can compromise you if you ever violated the oath. Mm. And death isn't good enough. You know why? Because they can kill you. But if you already let the secrets out, it's, you, see, you understand it's too late. Nah, they don't want to necessarily, they may kill you in the final analysis, but they need to intimidate you. And so what they usually do is they make you participate in homosexual activity because for most black males, you know, for the community to know that you participated in a homosexual activity is a very embarrassing thing. So most of them have been compromised with homosexual acts. You do have to sell your soul when you get to a certain level, which is why I thank God that I was never blessed with talent enough to go in any of those ways. I was always black consciousness and black revolution since I was a child. And when, and when young black boys and girls come to me and they say things like, I want to be a football player, I want to be a basketball, I want to be this, a part of me, I got to support them because there's nothing wrong with wanting to do that. But at the other end, I know that if they make it, they're going to have to sell their soul. Mm -hmm. And guess what? In the final analysis, it's never worth it. Look at Bill Cosby. You think, he, look, look, look where you at. When they done with you, they done with you. Whether you sold your soul or not, you still a Negro to them. So with everything that we covered, I think a lot of people um, who are just now awakening and, and having this third eye that's opening now with our society, it's just like, what do we do now that we know these things are issues? We, we have all these um, assassination, uh, literally torture, like George Floyd, to me, that's a torture video. It was a torture. You know, torture. we have, it's just in our face all the time, and it's like, okay, yes, we, we see these things are wrong, but it's like, what do we do? And I think a lot of people are just trying to decide. They hear your message, I feel like, um, they hear your opinion, your, they hear opinions of you, and I feel like people make their decisions based on their others' opinions, and I wanted to have you on the show mm -hmm. to kind of just speak your truth. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you the uh, opportunity now just to give a last word for those people who are just kind of searching. They feel like they're in the dark. Um, you know, you've done the research. This right. is the thing. I need people to understand that you've done the work, you know. It's, you know so that's my thing, like respect whether you they like you or not, you know, you've done the work. It's mm -hmm. something that so everybody can learn from you. So I guess for the last word, I'm going to just let you go in on it. I would say, you know, there's always going to be detractors because we are a people who have been psychologically engineered to work against our own best interests. I don't think we really understand what that white man did to us for 243 years. I really don't think black people understand the psychological trauma that slavery was. We still have not regained our original consciousness since that time. He created a Frankenstein in all of us, a Negro who works against the best interests of its own people without being paid and without being asked. If you're doing something positive, I guarantee you, there's a handful of Negroes trying to stop you. They, you. You never done nothing to them. You might not even know them, but they're going to try to stop you because that is how the white man created the new black consciousness, the energy of the Negro. You're doing something positive. I know there's people trying to stop you. You should see these comments because yes, I'm sitting here with you. I'm this, laughing. Look, <laughs> I got about two dozen Negroes with YouTube channels, right? who I never met in my life. I never met them. 
They make anti-Umar videos all day long. They have no job. They have no life. Some of them are even married. Don't make love to their wife because they're too busy making videos about Dr. Umar. How did this happen? Even the memes. Even the Because the white man made it popular for us to destroy each other on a slave plantation. He made it popular for us to tell on the runaway slaves. He made it popular for us to want to see black people do badly. Go back to the Derrick Jackson situation. Everybody not on Derrick Jackson because he cheated. Half the people on Derrick Jackson cheating their damn self. But it's the fact that a black man who was successful, attractive, doing well, has fallen from grace. By his own fault, yes, by his own fault. But that's not the point. The point is I get to laugh at another black man on his way down. And there is no better hobby for a Negro than to watch one of their own fall from success to failure. And until we get rid of that, that's why I'm building the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Because if you don't kill the Negro that lives in us, the African can never be reborn. You have a white demon in you mm. that needs to be exercised, and he's in the mind. And until you take that demon, that cracker in you, until you get the European out of the black psyche, mm. we'll never be free. Because the first freedom is psychological freedom. The first freedom is psychological freedom. And until we have that, we have nothing. Well, all right. I want to thank you for being on the show. Um, where can we donate to the school, which is beautiful? I have um, seen it with my own eyes. My aunts and my, my family members that have been helping out um, and everyone who else is volunteering. Um, where can we donate to the school? Couple ways. Way number one, get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. I repeat. Donate to the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Get on your cash app, dollar sign FDMG school. Get on your PayPal, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy. I repeat, paypal.me slash FDMG Academy for all my international Africans. You can also mail, check a money order payable to the FDMG Academy, P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware. P.O. Box 9634, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. In the fourth way, you can go to drumarjohnson.com and register to be a loyal donor. Automatic donation every month. $50 is the Bronze Club. $100 is the Silver Club. $250 a month is the Gold Club. $500 a month is the Platinum Club. And $1,000 a month is the Diamond Club. And you could also bring it to any of the lectures. We have the Boston Black Parent Boot Camp next Saturday, April the 10th. For anyone who wants to attend, you do not have to live in Massachusetts. Any parent out there who wants to get trained on how to be an effective advocate for your child, come to Boston April 10th. You can register at drumarjohnson.com. There will be a book signing in Boston the night before on April the 9th. I will be in Augusta, Georgia on April the 15th, I will be in Atlanta, Georgia, April the 16th. I will be in Tulsa, Oklahoma, May the 14th. Oakland, California, May the 15th. Los Angeles, May the 16th. South Bend, Indiana for the first time, May the 23rd. Support Dr. Umar Johnson, support black business, support independent schools, and let's organize and let's mobilize because the only way we can save ourselves is through organization and mobilization. Frederick Douglass said, those who will not fight for themselves when they have a means of doing so are not worth being fought for by others and will never lay the world under any obligation to them until they stand up and take their own freedom. Nobody's gonna fight for black people more than black people fight for themselves. Black power. If you need to reach me, 215-989-9858, 215-989-9858, also, last thing, we do have the Dr. Umar book.